Where are you two going acting so ridiculous? We're going to the circus! Circus? There's no circus. You ought to be getting to church and read the Word of God. The Dr. Barry Rapture Circus! Come on, he's only on Earth for a limited time! They've got lions and tigers and Dr. Barry! Oh my! <laughs> well, I never. Hmm. Mm. Crisp and new. Never red. Just the way I like them. Perfect and undisturbed. Sure does look like they're having fun. Christians aren't supposed to have fun. Jesus never laughed. Jesus wept. Thou fool. I'm I'm the good Christian. Ain't nothing gonna break my strides. I'm working for the Lord, my God. Oh no, oh yeah, I got to keep on moving. Ain't nothing gonna break in my stride. I'm working for the Lord, my God. Oh no, oh yeah, I got to keep on moving. Hey y'all, you ready for this circus? Oh yeah, I'm ready, Dr. Barry. This is so exciting. Everything is all coming together finally. Yes, it is. It all fits perfectly. Sally, what do you think? Uh, Dr. Barry, I can't wait to be reunited with my body. <laughs> How about you, Lightning? <laughs> Good thought. Okay, so I was going to do a video on uh, Samson because the, the rapture symbolism is so incredible. But I was talking to my wife and I said, you know, we found the rapture in the Revelation and the Thessalonians and the Matthew and the Genesis and the Exodus. And you know what? Hey, wait a second. And I started to look. And sure enough, every single book of the Bible <laughs> teaches something, gives a clue, another, another uh, piece of the puzzle about the rapture. And, and people still try to say, oh, God doesn't want us to know about the rapture. Oh, oh it's a hidden day. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's meant to be figured out. He is delighting in this adventure. And we're putting this together. And I just, I just got to give props to Gevti again for, you know, finding these people and, and, uh, and, and putting comp compilations together. Uh, the Revelation 12 guy today or yesterday today uh, knocked it out of the park. Listen, I know I recommend a lot of channels. But... If you watch these other videos, because I'm not covering all of what they're covering. I, I, I don't want to uh, teach what they find. Uh, um, but this will help you understand where we're at. So I really, really want you to check these people out, especially connected to what we're going to talk about today. So Revelation 12 guy knocked it out of the park. Kevin Strange, someone you might not have heard of. I, I was subscribed to him from a long, long time ago, but never saw anything come up on his feed, on my feed. So I didn't know he was still making videos. Lo and behold, Gefty guy, you know, uh, puts it on. I'm like, hey, that sounds like Kevin Strange from Cooterville, Texas. And so anyways, he knocked it out of the park the last couple of videos. Uh, Sabine, I told you about her yesterday. Go go back and watch at least her last three, if not four, four or five. Adar Gabrielle, little Adar. Uh, I believe she's a Jewish girl. <laughs> I'm not positive, but with a name like Adar, who knows, right? But uh, she did a couple of incredible videos just recently, too. So if, if you watch those, um, you, you will uh, get, get up to speed on what this uh, Tuba Av, Tuba Av, Tuba Av, is the, the festival connected to the 9th of Av. So what we've run into, okay, like we said from the beginning, we think Pentecost. We get to June 6th, we find out that's not the Pentecost. That's not the Christian Pentecost. That's the Shavuot, which we always tied together that the Shavuot was the Pentecost, but they're not. They're, they're different feasts, okay? Uh, so the Shavuot is like the beginning of the wheat harvest and, and the wave offering, perhaps, but, but then you count 50 more days. And then you get to the Feast of New Wine, which we started and, uh, you know, I thought perhaps ended uh, right before the 9th of Av, which, you know, maybe it did. But the 9th of Av, again, is something they practice for a period of time. It doesn't just end. So if you remember Jeff Sherwood that I pointed out um, back in our vacation, uh, uh, Heaven uh, Mansion Hideaway uh, vacation video, that uh, he said 
that, um, and he has the scripture to back this, that the Pentecost, the true Pentecost, which would be the wine festival, would be a two-week feast because each tribe had one day to present their offering, 12 tribes plus two Sabbaths equals 14 days. So perhaps we hit the first day of the, of the fifth month of Av and had a eight day and then ninth of Av and then ninth of Av, wait, wait, oh, wait, I just described this, but Revelation 12 co guy covers this and uh, a, a couple other people cover how they slept in their graves, right? And then um, they, they would uh, celebrate this until the 15th at the full moon, which, which is Tuba Av. And so it's all connected. So if you go from the first day of the fifth month to the 15th, that's a two week festival, like Jeff Sherwood taught about, each tribe presenting one day. It ties in with the Feast of Wine starting, being an extended fast. It doesn't make any sense. Like you'll see Kevin Strange say, now he, he says he thinks it's a three day feast. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I think it's a seven or eight day feast, our thought. But now I'm, I'm turning my mind. Uh, I, I'm open. This thing is called the Feast of Weeks, right? So um, it, it connects from the first day of the fifth month to the 15th day, which if you go to Psalm 81, let's go there real quick. So Psalm 81, uh, verse three. Now there's different translations. And, and this is the King James. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed. Holy convocations, Batman, and on our solemn feast day, and it calls it a day. But other translations say, blow up the trumpet in the new moon, comma, in the full moon, comma, in the feast day. So if you go from a new moon sliver and you go 15 days, then you hit the full moon. So that verse may be the key to putting this all together. We got the feast of new wine, we've got the ninth of Av, and we've got the tuba Av. So, um, on, the, on the Feast of, again, uh, Revelation 12 guy does this, but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give you this brief section. Uh, maybe I'll have him play it. But they would sleep in their graves every night on the, on the 9th of Av, and the 9th and the 10th, okay? So that connects our Noah story that we just found, that, that Noah says on the, on the 10th of Av was when the raven was sent out. So, some, some of you might say, well, you know, 10th of Av passed, nothing happened. Do you know? Do you know Satan wasn't cast down? Do you know he's not here right now? How could you know? Did you expect to see it? I mean, maybe he's not, but maybe he was. I, I keep telling you, these dates that pass, just because we don't see anything doesn't mean there's not a whole lot going on in heaven and the heavenly realms. But, okay, so every ninth of Av, during the 40-year walking in the wilderness punishment, they would go out and dig their own graves, and the, and the men of war would, and they would sleep in their graves. Then the next morning, the, the family would come out on the 10th of Av and say, any, any soul among the living arise, like resurrection. And then the ones that uh, were alive climbed out of the grave. But every year, 15,000 would die. There's that 15. 15 is judgment. So every year, 15,000 men would die. And so they'd just cover over with the dirt, and it was done. But how, how awesome, how grisly that they had to dig their own graves, right? But... Um, so, and that's what people on earth are doing right now with their, with their brain and their heart uh, and their actions and their words. They're digging their own grave. You're digging your own grave, right? So they, they, they kept doing that all 40 years. And then on the 40th year, well, you know, they, they, they're keeping track. They didn't know it was going to be exactly uh, 40 years to this certain day, right? So they, they get there in the 40th year and they're sleeping in the graves. And the guys come out and say, anybody among the living, get up, arise. And everybody got up. And uh, they're all looking at each other like, uh, what's going on? Nobody died. And so they thought, this is according to Revelation 12 guy, and he's got, again, the, uh, it's, it's, it's not in this Bible story, but it's in the Jewish uh, documents, that they, they thought maybe we counted the days wrong, so let's get back into the grave just to make sure we didn't you know, disobey God. So then they, they went back into the grave each night for five more nights, from the 10th of Av to the 15th of Av. Then at the 15th of Av, it was the full moon. So they knew they were on the right time of that's the 15th of Av. So we, now we don't have to sleep in the graves anymore. So they, that was when they confirmed that there was no more curse from the Lord and that nobody else was going to die and that they were about to go into the promised land. Are, are you putting it all together, right? So, I mean, there's so much to this. This is, this is absolutely incredible. So that became then the biggest celebration day and the biggest day of getting married and thinking about getting into the promised land and the blessings of God coming was this 15th of Av. But it went from the new moon to the 9th of Av 
judgment, five more days, and then Tuba Av. And so right now, you'll see in Revelation 12 guy video, he starts out this year, 2020, the, there's over a half a million Jews already signed up for this to celebrate this Tuba Av around the world. So every single one of them is going to be praying at an exact time, 10 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock um, Israel time. And all over the world, they're going to be praying and expecting heaven's gates to open up and a blessing to come and that everybody that wants to get married will be able to get married. And they're going to have this huge party and they're going to be dancing in the vineyards in white dresses, the virgins. C could you write a better story than this? Okay. And they're all praying to unite Israel because they are against trying to um, integrate into other cultures. So they're trying to keep Judaism and Hebrew lineage pure and not integrate, which is what they were instructed to do, be a set apart people. So they're going to do this big prayer on the 15th of Av, which is the full moon. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the full moon, and in the appointed day, the feast day. And he calls it a day, even though it's two week long. So look, the day of the Lord is seven years long. Okay? So it's, when he says day, that doesn't always mean day. Just like hour doesn't always mean hour. A year doesn't always mean year. Week doesn't always mean week. You have to read the context. You have to study extra uh, information. So anyways, um, just, you know, some people are like, oh, now what? The date passed. What? I, you know, I right off the bat, I said that this is something we are figuring out. Oh my gosh. There's this one verse that uh, um, Kevin Strange posts. And uh, I, I, I literally, I got to read it to you verbatim. Hold on. Okay, so this is from the book of Ezra. And, and remember, Ezra is a 15th book. 15 judgment. There's another 15. And uh, uh, just, this is so good. This is Ezra 7, 9. Now, if you remember uh, in a few p videos in the past, I talked about Esdras in the book of Esdras, where there was extra biblical meaning, extra biblical books that were written for the learned and the wise. So Esdras is Ezra in Greek. So that, those books are known as the Greek Ezra. Same guy. And the Lord took him and some of his elders and they wrote for 40 days and 40 nights what he told him. And then the Lord said, now publish these books to everybody that, the, that anyone can read. But these 70 books keep for the elders who are learned and wise. So that's what we're seeing these other fellows uh, you know, quote from is, is some of this other wisdom information that wasn't meant for the public. So this is Ezra 7, 9, in, right in your own Bible. For on the first day of the first new moon, he began to go up from Babel. So Babel is Babylon means confusion. And on the first day of the fifth new moon, first day of the fifth month, new moon, he came to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his Elohim upon him. So Jer Jerusalem in, in, in Hebrew is Yeru Shalahim. Yeru Shalahim. Now Shalahim or Shalom means peace. And Yeru, listen, Jerusalem simply means the teachings that make one complete in heart, being, and mind. So, all of a sudden, since this first day of the fifth month, actually, you know, from the beginning of this year, I started posting, I started making my videos uh, right at Passover, which I thought was just like so poetic, prophetic, etc. Such a, such a God thing. And so from that time, the, the knowledge has been growing. Listen to what the Lord says, okay? From the first day of the first new moon, he started to come out of confusion. Now, Ezra means helper. Okay? So, anybody down here on earth that chooses to be a helper of our Lord, he can play the part of Ezra and get revelation. So, I'm trying to help spread this message, the good news of the Lord. He said, encourage each other with this good news. So, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be a helper. So, Ezra means helper. So, he says, Ezra, from the first day of the first new moon, he began to go up from confusion. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to the teachings that make one complete in heart, being, and mind. Heart, soul, and mind. So, it's like it's all falling together. I have not felt like for a single moment that we hit, oh no, it's all wrong. I just, it's like, wow, this was, June 6, 7 was an incredible, gigantic piece. Again, a revelation that millions of people have thought opposite of. Ends up being proven correct. Absolutely right. That is the true feast that was meant to be the Shavuot, where the Lord descended on the mount. It was June 6th and 7th. See? So, how could somebody say attack that and say, oh, that was wrong? Wrong about what? Right? Yeah, it wasn't the rapture, but it's a piece of that. And it's connected. But this has not stopped since then. 
So then we get to the ninth of Av. Well, Noah's Ark story tells the ninth of Av, ninth and tenth of Av. He sends out the raven. Do you know the raven didn't come out? No, you don't. But then where's this knowledge been about this Tuba Av? How, how, how do we not know? Listen, they went, they, they went on the ninth of Av, slept in the graves. They all woke up alive. They're like, wait, did we pick the wrong day? I'm not saying nothing. Go sleep in your grave tonight for the next five nights till the full moon, okay? Uh, or I guess it's four now. <laughs> and, then, and then when the full moon passes and we don't get raptured, okay, then you, then you can get up and say, I'm mad, I got dirt all over me. Or maybe some people are going to be in that grave permanently. Well, you know, until the end. Because he's going to come with hailstones and coals of fire. So I just want to jump through here, you know, book by book, by book and show you how the Lord has been trying to teach us of this Pentecost, wheat harvest, new wine harvest, rapture story of the new bride being snatched through every book of the Bible. I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to do the first 22 today. But um, speaking of helper, right? There's, there's uh, the X-Men movie you, most of you are familiar with, I'm pretty sure. And um, Charles Xavier, Professor X, he uses this thing called Cerebro, right? And he could put that helmet on and then he could see everybody on earth. And so I'm going to show you a clip of this. And hopefully um, uh, uh, I can use the Fair Use Act under the Fair Use Act. I don't know how to post the thing or whatever. But hopefully this doesn't get flagged and I can't show it. But this, this is what it, is, it looks like. You want me to leave? No. Just don't move. Lights represent every living person on the planet. The white lights are humans. And these are the mutants. Through Cerebro, I'm connected to them. And they to me. Okay, so that's how the Spirit of God works in the Spirit of Satan. So the people that were shining bright white, they got the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in them, and then God can use them and speak through them. But the Spirit, that, the ones that were red, that Professor X said, these are the mutants, and we're not as alone as you think, they represent the people with the, the, the sins of the heart, okay? Hate, jealousy, envy, greed, anger, whatever, right? So their spirit is in tune with Satan. And so Satan can talk through any one of the red ones, but Satan can't talk through somebody shining bright, bright white with the Lord's Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is so powerful, you know, that it scares little Satan away like a cockroach. But if someone dwells, mm, I'm just so filled with hate, then they can be Satan's little helper. Okay? So we, we, we could see some people that are Christians, right? Or we think they are, and then maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But they can be used by Satan. Look at Peter. He, he said, no, I'm against uh, you going to the, to the cross to complete your work. I will fight with you and I won't let it happen. You know, so here he brings up this angry spirit. And so what does Jesus say to him? Get thee behind me, Satan. Because he knew he was speaking Satan's words. And then most of you, again, forget this or maybe never knew it. Judas was filled with greed. Remember, he, he was so mad that she used that uh, oil that I, I could have got $300 out of that. And then he betrayed him. He betrayed Jesus for silver, for money. So he was filled with greed. And so the Bible says, then entered Satan into Judas Iscariot. And then Judas Iscariot did all of the betrayal. So Satan entered in and used him. Whereas if, if, Jesus, if, if Judas Iscariot had fallen in love with Jesus and his spirit was knit one with him, Satan couldn't use him. He would have needed somebody else. So that was all part of the plan. It was supposed to happen. You know, I don't, I don't mean to, to, to say it could have happened different, but that is how it works. So is your spirit filled with love and joy and happiness and sharing and, and togetherness? Or is it about, you know, some, some negative stuff? Satan might be able to use you, so be careful. All right. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's go to and fro through this word. Okay, we have a special treat. I have asked a couple of special guests to come on and sing us a little song. So, uh, Mr. Bones, if you wouldn't mind moving over, and Sally, 
We're going to have uh, my wife and my lovely daughter come and uh, sing a song for you. And um, incidentally, my, uh, my daughter is legally deaf in one ear. And uh, at the time that we were finding this out, we thought perhaps that she would go totally deaf. And um, so we started praying really hard and, and, and believing that our Lord would come through. And uh, so we started learning sign language. But the Lord came through and she never got another bit deaf. And her other ear works perfectly. But um, that's why I said I started practicing sign language. But I, I, I let it go and, and I've forgotten, you know, there was, there's these... Yeah, I love. I I still love the the act of it. And I, I want to learn it, um, but I don't. I don't think it'll be that useful in heaven. So, anyways, uh, lovely ladies, if you'll come out and uh, do your little performance. Oh gosh. Okay, one, two, one, two, three. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Again. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. God. <laughs> I ran out of breath. <laughs> Woohoo! Amen. Amen. Now that's what I call good. <laughs> is, this, is this one an okay sign, everybody? Okay, it's good. How do you say good? It's good. Oh. Yeah. yeah. This is boy. It was cool. It's like, this is boy like a uh, uh, cap. Here, Mimi showed you how to say cool. It was cool. Cool. I thought, I always thought this was cool. Hey. That's good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Come again. Please do. Come again. Everybody loves when you come. All right. Back to the Bible. Wow. I'm so blessed. Okay, guys, come back in. We got to keep this circus going. Okay, so um, in the interest of time, uh, I'm not going to give you uh, every uh, chapter and verse. I'm, I'm just going to go through this kind of quickly. So in Genesis, we just learned in the, in well from the first word, he said first fruits, which we now understand is this Pentecost new wine. And then in the book of Noah, he tells the exact timeline. He brings us to the ninth of Av, and one week later, you remember the dove comes out and comes back, and then one le week later, the dove is, goes out. And the dove goes out for a period of time and then comes back with an olive leaf. So maybe that's the seven days, right? So that fits perfect now that I think about it. Oh my God. Okay, so on the, on the tenth of Av, the raven went out and it's going to be gone for seven. And the dove went out and came back. So I thought that was going to be the rapture, right? And then we'd be, the dove would be on the ark for seven. But after seven, he lets the dove out again. See, that brings us to the fifteenth of Av and a full moon. Okay, and then in the story of Joseph... You know, that, that whole thing's got the whole rapture tribulation storyline in it. But remember, the baker brings the bread and then the butler brings the wine. And it says, he crushed some grapes and made it to wine and he gave the cup. He, he made new wine. He crushed the grapes and turned it to wine, gave the cup to Pharaoh, representing the father, and he drank it right up and he, he restored him. But he hung the, the, uh, the baker on the tree. Okay, in uh, the book of Exodus, we saw how they came out of Egypt, and the Lord said, bring them out so that they may do this feast. Then, um, that was in chapter 5, first verse of the fifth chapter. Then in, in chapter 6, he tells about the four cups, the four promises. I will bring you out. I, I, will, I will take you to me, and I will be your God, and I will bring you into the land is the cup that's not drunk. Then we go all the way to Exodus 32, when finally Aaron says, tomorrow is the feast unto the Lord, and that's the first day of the fifth month. So right there, we just keep going over this. And then uh, Moses, you know, smashes the tables and, and Moses and Joshua come down. And, he, and then he says, now I must go up to make atonement for you. Then we go to the book of Leviticus. And uh, Leviticus tells about all of his specific feasts and the time where you must appear before the Lord. And he lays out the law. And within these stories tells why the rapture and us being presented and coming before the Lord on a certain exact day has to fulfill a certain exact day. Then we go to the book of Numbers. And Numbers, again, starts to lay it out exact. It, it, it says, uh, it's, it starts off right where Exodus left off. And go to the 13th chapter, and there's 13 verses about the 9th of Av. 13th chapter starts a story that ends up being 13 verses. Did I mention that the 9th of Av original provocation happened in the year 1313 B.C.? 
That's how the Lord loves to work. Then we go to the book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy has an exact number of verses that match the Hebrew years that are right now. And we find out that the year from 5777 and 570, 770 and 771, that it, goes, it tells the story of these last 10 years. And it brings us to the year 5780. And 780 means Ararat which is exactly the mount that uh, the ark came to rest on, which means reverse the curse. So that's the year we're in right now is Ararat. And we learn that the next year, 781, is dung. And the, the Lord said in uh, Luke, he said, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit said, leave it alone. Uh, let's dung it this year and see, see if there's anything. But, you know, they waited three years. Oh, my God. It, it's just... Then he starts telling exactly about the tribulation. But we, we know the timeline of Deuteronomy is accurate because it has World War I, World War II, the uh, getting back the land in 1948, the um, Six-Day War in 1967, the Yom Kippur War in 1973. All those match up perfectly. And so now in verse 27 of uh, chapter 32 of Deuteronomy, that matches with the year 5780, the year of corrections. Okay, Ararat, reverse the curse. And it's after a bunch of uh, uh, judgment-type verses that he says, were it not that I feared the enemy, that their hand was high against them, I, I would have completed this, but now I'm going to change my mind. And I'm going to do it this way. And then he tells 15 verses, 15 judgment, about the tribulation. And we're in right now, the book of Psalms, um, we're in the, the number of Psalm 120, which represents the year 2020, and it starts the Songs of Ascent. Did I mention there's 15 Songs of Ascent? Written by Hezekiah, who Hezekiah was appointed to die, and he prayed to the Lord earnestly, and he was a good king. And the Lord heard him, and he sent Isaiah back to say, the Lord heard you, you're not going to die. And, and uh, Isaiah said, or, uh, Hezekiah said, can I have a sign? And he's like, would you rather the sun move forward, the shadow of the sun move forward, uh, 10 degrees, or backwards? And he chose backwards. And what happened when the sun moved backwards? It lengthened the days from 360 day year to 365. Kevin Strange covers that in the video he posted. Now, he, he, he did say that his friend uh, did most of that video. So anyways, um, fantastic stuff, right? So tribulation is going to start. Hailstones and coals of fire. The earth's going to wobble to and fro like a drunkard so when we get raptured. Read Psalm 18. It, it's like, all hell comes on, on earth, but at the same time, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me into a large place. And so the, I believe all that trauma on the earth, how about the earth breaking apart and giving birth to billions of dead, right? So I think the day, and we know that the and Lord said, if, if the days weren't shortened, nobody would survive. So as Kevin points out, the days are going to go back to 360 day years. Well, that's five days. That's a five-day difference. And everybody believes, well, Bible scholars understand the years will be 360 because of the timelines in uh, Daniel and in Revelation. Those are 360-day years that he says uh, a time, time, and half times. 1,260 days. But, so, listen, in five days from now, on the new moon of Tuba Av, and the, all the Jews all over the world, millions of Jews all over the world are praying for the gates of heaven to open up and a blessing to drop, so that they can all get married. And what's going to happen is all the Christians are going to go. Hell's going to break loose on earth. And it's going to shorten the days back to the 9th of Av. So that next year, instead of exactly 365 years later, them hitting to Av, it's going to be the 9th of Av. So, I mean, that's just too juicy to, to, to skip. Okay, after Deuteronomy, Joshua. We went through Joshua. Joshua tells the story of crossing over, coming back. And then when he's about to take the land, it's the 9th of Av. And he says, I'm as strong today as I was then. Then we go to the book of Judges. And Judges, I mean, uh, please please go read this. Again, starting in 13, chapter 13, you're going to read about Samson. And uh, let's see if I can just pull out some, some of these real quick. So his, his, his uh, mom uh, was barren. So it took, it took God supernatural intervention for Samson to be born. And uh, his name uh, uh, means the sun, like the sun, strength of the sun. His name means, I'll, I'll post it right here. Okay, and um, so then, uh, you know, he's a Nazarite representing Jesus. So Samson represents Jesus, the strong man, coming out of his chamber, uh, you know, like a bridegroom. And then um, it came to pass that he's like, uh, 
I see this woman, get her for me, right? So he asks, he asks the father and the mother, so representing God and the Holy Spirit, get that woman for me. And so he, <laughs> he grabs, that's us, right? Get this woman for me. And the time of it is at the wheat harvest. And remember, there's all this fiasco and they get mad. And so um, he, uh, he uh, sets the fox's tails on fire to run through the wheat field and burn it down. That's the tribulation. So it's at the time of the wheat harvest. And then it literally says that uh, Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnah and came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, so there's the wine. The vineyard and the grapes are growing. New wine. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him. When we leave, the Spirit's going to come on the 144,000 witnesses. And uh, he, he tore him in half. And then later there was a beehive in it, right? Well, uh, Sabine does a, a fantastic job of this, teaching how the constellation of Cancer is actually a sheepfold, but it's also representing a beehive, okay? And then Cancer and Leo are right next to each other. So here's the story where he just points out Leo and Cancer as the timing of the wheat harvest, of the timing of him getting a new bride. And then he, he, the companion takes the new bride, and then he gets Delilah, the betrayer, right? And he knows he's going to be betrayed because she keeps asking him, and they keep coming trying to get him, and he's just laughing. But what does he do at the end? He voluntarily gives himself up. And then they gouge out his eyes, and he pushes over the temple, and the pillars go down. Rapture in the book of Judges, the seventh book. What's the very next book? And I can go on. But oh, uh, Judges ends, of course, with the virgins dancing on Tuba Av. I, you know, I, I knew it was a grape harvest because they're hiding in the vineyards and they're dancing in white uh, dresses. But um, according to all these, you know, brilliant people, that was actually Tuba Av. And now I understand that thanks to all these, these fine people. So that's in uh, chapter 21. That's how the book ends. goes right into the eighth book, Ruth. Does anybody know the story of Ruth, right? Does everybody know the Gentile bride being married after the barley harvest and the wheat harvest and they're actually married at the wine harvest and probably married on Tuba Av? I mean, they leave that part out of it, but it's, it's all these hints that drive us exactly right to this same story. So then we go to the book of Samuel and that's the ninth book which speaks of judgment. And Samuel, we're going to see the rapture picture in The Lord Maketh the Poor and maketh the rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them to inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. Pillar represents church, has the gematria value of 12,000. Of, uh, 12, 12, so there's your 120. And um, he, he takes the pillars and he takes the people out of the dung hill this year. Dung. Okay, this, this is incredible in the book of Samuel. You're like, oh, first book of Samuel doesn't talk anything about rapture. Listen to this. <clears throat> I am going to read this, chapter 10. Okay. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head. He's, he's anointing Saul, who is going to represent the Antichrist. And kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee? to be captain over this inheritance. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher, and the tie-in with Rachel and Rachel's tears, oh my goodness, on the border of Benjamin, son of my right hand, at Zelzah. And they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for thy son? So, in uh, Sabine's uh, explanation of cancer and it being a sheepfold, two of the stars that the beehive is in between are known as the northern ass and the southern ass. So already he's pointing out that constellation. But it gets better. Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, which means choice or purity. And there shall thee meet three men going up to God, Elohim, to Bethel, which means house of God. So they're going to meet three men going up to heaven, to the house of God. One carrying three kids. Remember Ariga, the constellation? Uh, shaman, And he's got two kids, two baby lambs of one year, and a, and a kid goat. And he's, and he's taking them off and rapturing them off. You're going to meet, you meet one that's carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread. And the other carrying a skin of wine. 
So we got our bread and our wine and the three kids all talking about the Pentecost rapture time period. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. So this is for them staying here. So he had three kids, three loaves of bread and a skin of wine. And he gives two loaves to the guys staying here. So what goes up? The, the three kids, Ariga, one loaf of bread goes up and one skin of wine goes up. The new wine goes up. Isn't that great? Okay, so that, again, that ties our constellations. And after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place. What did I say? We get raptured, and then the Holy Spirit is divided among the 144,000. The Holy Spirit comes down on them powerfully. One person suggested they would be raptured instantly from around the world into Israel. I don't know about that, but the Spirit will come down just like when Moses was running into too much trouble. God said, bring up 70 of your best guys and I'm going to take the Spirit from you and put it onto them. And then you're all going to work together. And that makes 71 and 71 is the number of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is a coincidence. There shall meet prophets coming down from a high place with the psaltery and the tabret and the pipe and the harp before them and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. <laughs> He's going to be turned into another man. You know, and this might represent Satan and the Antichrist, you know, and the spirit of Satan coming on him and him being turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before men to Gilgal, which means the circle of the rock, and it also has the gematria of 66, which is 66 books. And, um, and there's, uh, inc incidentally, 66 days from, uh, from this, this day until uh, uh, the tribulation started on Day of Atonement. Oh, wow. I mean, this uh, Tuba Av, or the Ninth of Av. I, I did the math a, a while back. Anyways, um, thou shalt go down before thee to Gilgal, to the circle of the rock, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Ezekiel's wheel. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and the sacrifice of sacrifices of peace offerings. Peace offerings, as Jeff Sherwood uh, taught us, that only happens at uh, Pentecost. Seven days shalt thou tarry. Huh? What? Seven? What? Till I come unto thee and shew thee what thou shalt do. Okay. And, okay, so that, that's enough of that. But that's in 1 Samuel uh, 10. What about 2 Samuel? 2 Samuel have rapture clues? Surely not. Oh, 2 Samuel just tells about the tribulation being longer than seven years, like seven years and six months. And that's because David was the, the leader over Hebron. Hebron means in association or companion, taken as a companion. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be paralambano, taken as a companion. The other will be aphimini, which means divorced, issued a bill of divorcement. These are people that had their chance to be with the Lord, but they turned. And he is not... They're not in relationship with him anymore. So he says, I'm going to take you as a companion. And David, representing God, representing Jesus, his name is spelled Dor, Nail, Dor. Dalet, Vav, Dalet. So he's the door that connects to the door. I got that from Pastor Sandy. And um, uh, the gematria, of, oh, it's too much. Okay, I'll just, uh, anyways, so the door connected to the door reigns over the praise, you know, Judah, which is praise. That's what we do, we Christians for seven years and six months. And they repeat that a few times through here. And then he reigns over all of Israel for a 33. And there's your 33 judgment. So that's in the book of Samuel. And, um, oh my gosh. Uh, this, is, this is almost too much to read. I'll, I'll just point out some of it. If you go into uh, chapter two and do translations of the names, I'll do this really quickly. Um, you're gonna see the names Father of Light, Tribulation, Zer, Zer, Zeruiah means tribulation of the Lord. Um, Ash, Azahel, Azahel means made by God. Abishai means gift from God. Joab means Yahweh is father. Abner means father of light. And so basically what you're going to find is that the father of light uh, killed gift from God by smoking him through the fifth rib, fifth rib, under the fifth rib, like the fifth month. And remember the, the number five is the the praise, the Spirit of God. It's a man with his hands up. So it's the Holy Spirit. We're getting raptured this month, the fifth month. And then the sixth month, next month, August into September, is the nail that connects. And then seven, 
The number seven was, an, was a pictograph of the sword of God. And the sword will come at the Feast of Atonement. Okay? Wait till I show you the constellations of what happens on the 15th. I'll just tell you right now. Okay, the sun is in uh, Can Sur, which is the sheepfold, which is the, the two asses and the, and the beehive. Okay? And the moon has moved 15 days to Aquarius dumping out judgment. Okay, so exactly on the 15th day of Av, on Tu Ba'av, the full moon appears in Aquarius, which is the sign of judgment being poured out. And the sun and the moon are at the exact same height on the horizon. The sun is in the sheepfold, the beehive, the heaven constellation, and the moon is in judgment on the 15th day to Ba'av at exactly 7.26 a.m. Art thou with me in jest? Remember how I taught you in, in uh, the book of Noah? Now, again, I don't, I don't want people to, to jump on, oh, he's wrong about this, so he's wrong about everything. Look, it's my belief that the flood started on the Day of Atonement. When every single year, you reset the clock by Virgo and that star known as Spica, but it used to be known as Abib, and the new moon, Sliver. And when you do that, then every single year at the Feast of Atonement, the moon will be in Aquarius dumping judgment. And that's what the whole practice is about. So... Um, I could go on on this, but it, it's just a really neat story because he, he literally tells the exact uh, tribulation story and, um, and the timing of it is, is the same. Let's see. Um, okay, we can skip that. Okay. Let's go to the next book. Uh, and, also in, um, and also in 2 Samuel, at the end, in uh, chapter 22, and uh, in chapter 22 is the original speaking of the Psalm of David. Okay, this is when he spoke it. So, so uh, this is the Psalm 18. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, and I will trust him. And he sent from above and he took me, he drew me on many waters. The Lord thundered from the heavens. That's all right there. Again, telling the tribulation story and the rapture story. Okay, then the next book, 1 Kings. So in 1 Kings, what could possibly talk about the rapture, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. So it's an 11th book and it has the number um, it, that is Kof, Kof which uh, it looks like a palm of the hand and it represents the hand of God and it, it has the, the, the definition or meaning of, of God allowing something or to cover something. And this is the story, if you read from uh, chapter 1, verse 1 all the way to 17, which there's your 117, which is divide the waters. This is when David is dying. He's 70 years old, perfect 70, and he takes a young virgin, Abishag, to keep him warm. They don't consummate the marriage. She's just there to keep him warm because he's old and he can't get any heat. And so in these 17 verses, it talks about him taking that virgin and then the, uh, Solomon is, is supposed to take over. But Adonijah is trying to usurp Solomon. And so Bathsheba gets involved in everything. But it is understood by the extra biblical books that David died and was uh, raised at the Pentecost feast at the Pentecost feast. So at Pentecost, which we're still in until somebody can, you know, close the book on this, which this might be it. Two week festival, peace offerings. Each tribe comes up one at a time for 12 days plus two Sabbaths. Jeff Sherwood, I don't have his name here, but Jeff Sherwood did that teaching. It was excellent. And um, so David goes up at Pentecost with a, with a new bride, or he just took a new bride, goes up at Pentecost, and then Solomon comes in. What's the first story Solomon does? The two women come with one baby, it's the cut baby story. And he says, I'm going to cut the baby in half. And the true mother says, no. What's the first thing that's going to happen right after we're out of here? They're going to divide Israel. The Antichrist, not Donald Trump, somebody will rise up, maybe go into Donald Trump's body or Kushner or Obama or who, who knows. But Satan himself is going to go into a body and change him into another man. And he's going to divide Israel. And then he's going to start that temple. And the temple will be built next year and in the second month. <laughs> Isn't it great? Oh, yeah, we're not supposed to know anything. Just, uh, these are just stories about some Jews and such. So that's in the uh, book of First Kings, and there's so much more, but that's enough. So, um, oh, wait, uh, one more thing in First in Kings. It's, this is when um, Elijah calls down fire from, so the false prophets are like praying to Baal, and he's like, all right, I'll challenge you, you know, and he's like, uh, uh, make fire come down from heaven, and they can't do it. 
And remember, the Antichrist will cause fire to come down from heaven, which will convince the Jews, a fool of the Jews, right? Um, so they're going to need the witnesses, the two witnesses, and the 144,000 to help, you know, save people for everybody from believing that lie. But in this story is when he calls down fire from heaven to burn up, you know, he, he poured water all over his. And uh, that story will come in important uh, in, a, in a little bit, uh, something else I'm going to teach. So uh, then the story, and that's in uh, 17, 18, and 19. And uh, in, in 19, the, the, the um, tribulation chapter, um, I mean the judgment chapter, talks all about the great tribulation. All right, then jump to uh, 2 Kings. 2 Kings tells about Elijah getting raptured, and he knew the day and the hour. And Elisha, his partner, who's not getting raptured, he knew the day and the hour that Elijah was going to get raptured. And they crossed the Jordan twice. Now, uh, Sabine did a video where she talks about Comet New Wise. And there's a constellation in the, in the heavens that, that represented the River Jordan. And Comet New Wise crossed the River Jordan once, and then it's about to cross it back. And that's, that's the story we saw with Joshua, that they crossed the Jordan, then they came back. Remember, Jordan means the Great Descent. So now Comet ne Neo Wise, which New Wisdom, right? And... Uh, so he's, it, that's crossing, and it's about to cross back, all falling into this same story, just like with Elijah. He crosses over, there's a rapture, and then Elisha crosses back over the Jordan, and he smotes the water with the power, a double portion, that he got when Elijah dropped his mantle, which is like a red cape. But the 50 men from Bethel, house of God, and the 50 men from Jericho, which is place of the moon, they all knew the day and the hour that Elijah, Eli, Yah, my God is Yahweh, Yut, Hey, Vav, Hey, the ones that understand that Jesus Christ is God, they get raptured and they knew the day and the hour in the book of 2 Kings right off the bat. And Elisha, Eli, Shah, means my God is Yeshua. Now, after rapture, after I take you into the promised land, will I begin to magnify Yeshua in your eyes? And that's what he told Joshua. But we're not supposed to know. Now, as far as the timing of this, the only clue uh, that I found right off the bat was that bears came out uh, um, and attacked those 42 um, kids, right? Uh, that were making fun of uh, Elisha for being bald. And so, you know, it wasn't during hibernation. Um, but, you know, and some of these don't necessarily have the clue of the date, but most of them do. Um, but some of them tell the other critical parts that... Um, we need to know, like, that Elijah knew the day and the hour. Okay, uh, so then, after 2 Kings, what's the next book? The first book of the Chronicles. Oh, that's the most boring book. Remember when, uh, uh, in the story of Esther, how the king couldn't sleep? So he's like, have somebody come and read Chronicles to me, and I'll go right to sleep. So I'm not calling it boring. God's calling it boring. And so he, he uh, has them uh, come in to read this, and that's when he hears out that Mordecai uh, actually tried to save him. And so he's like, he calls Haman in. He's like, if I wanted to honor somebody, what would you do? And he's like, put a royal robe on him and put him on a horse. That's us in heaven, right? And uh, because we didn't bow down to the Satan. And it'll also be the, the, um, uh, the saints, the tribulation saints, and anybody that resists the mark, and they overcome, the overcomers. My son-in-law Connor's birthday and we heard it was gonna rain but he wanted to have a cookout so I prayed to God that we would have an opening just over the top of like our house where the Sun would shine in so we could still swim in the pool Everywhere else is pitch black, except for over our house, it's starting to peek through the sun. Uh, so, I'm not that surprised because I know my father loves me, and I prayed it, and I expected goodness. But it is funny to get it on video. Okay, so this is just funny, because it is sunshine right over my pool and deck, and it's hot. See the sun shining on the sand pit, on our yard, and then everywhere around us is dark, black, cloudy skies. And I asked our Father, who art in heaven, if he would separate a little area. Hello, Father! I love you too! Just over my house. And, well, as you can see, the sun is directly just right over my house. And then 
Lord also thundered from the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire! Jesus saves. And they were dancing and singing and moving to the groove and and just when it hit me somebody turned around and shouted play that funky music white boy play that funky music right well you can tell by the way i use my walk i'm a woman's man no time to talk music loud and women want i've been kicked around since i was born and now it's all right it's okay you may look the other way we can try to understand new york times affect a man whether you're a brother or whether you're a mother you're staying alive staying alive ah ha 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 staying alive